How would you handle it if you were working on a project with great people, it's magical, great chemistry, but they're a little bit behind on paying you? Mm -hmm. How would you approach that? What, what do you mean by a little bit behind? <laughs> Couple months. If that'd be a long project, um, I'd hand it off to my agent. I'd tell my agent to deal with it, you know, and have they have a legal team and I I would I would keep doing I mean I, I certainly wouldn't confront any of my creative partners or probably even tell them about it. Um, I mean I might if I felt they would have influence with the production company, you know, but I wouldn't threaten them. I wouldn't be one of those guys like I'm gonna walk off. You know, again, I'm committed to the work first. And even if even if those bastards never paid me, I'd I'd finish the job and never work with them again. You know, but 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 to me, somebody else's bad behavior is not a license for me to also have bad behavior. Um, you know, again, if somebody's being unsafe, if somebody's being jeopardized, you know, or harassed or harmed, that would be different. I would certainly you know, become defensive and confrontational in that responsibility, you know, as, as you know, to whatever degree was, was necessary in the moment. But, you know, by and large, I believe in, in di diplomacy and professionalism. And, and if it's just that my pay is late, um, I certainly wouldn't be happy about it, but I'm not going to harm the work and I'm not going to harm my relationship with the parties who are not directly involved in that, you know, predicament. How about earlier in your career when you did not have an agent? Well, you know, it would it would still be a similar strategy, but I I would not jeopardize my position on the project. I would I would not go into DEFCON mode until after the project wrapped, you know. And even then I wouldn't be, you know, impolitic about it. I would, you know, I would be professional. I would, you know, I would give them notice and then I would either get a lawyer or I would you know, file a complaint um, with the labor board, you know, I would, you know, do the right things. If I was in the union, I would, you know, or I mean, I, I am in the union now, but if I was at the time, I would report it to the union. And that's the other thing, too, is if I was on that job, in addition to sicking my agent on them, I would sick the union on them. Um, but but it, if I was all on my own, I would, like I said, I would just wait until, you know, I would not be happy, but I would put up with it until we were done and then I would go through the, you know, the legal avenues available to me. And, and if I ended up getting boned in the end, and even if I didn't, even if they ended up paying, if I had a bad experience and felt they were being predatory, I would just never work with them again. You know, to, to answer that, it's like, look, you know, in, in, in withholding my pay, they're already harming me, right? You know, but if I pee in my own well, then that's adding harm, you know? If I, if I, um, provoke them in such a way that they spread, you know, bad stories about me. Even if they're in the wrong, I don't know who they know. You know, if if the producer or the or director or my, you know the actors, you know, if I create a situation where they think I have some bad behavior, you know, that's going to harm me. I don't, you know, there's no value in that. To me, that's just that's just adding adding my own harm to it. Um, and I just don't think it's going to improve it. And that's that's just based on my value because, again, I'm there first and foremost for the work and the relationships. How much time do you spend each day improving your craft as a cinematographer? Well, see, that's one of those formula questions. There's, there's just no formulas. Um, there is no bullet point on my calendar every day. Um, I nebulously engage, you know, I read the news, I read IMDb Pro News, I engage on social media, I belong to networking groups, I belong to, you know, groups specifically about film lenses, I belong to cinematographer groups, I belong to professional groups like the Canadian Society of Cinematographers, the Visual Effects Society. And, you know, I look, what are people talking about? You know, what are the articles they're posting? I might come across an article and post it. Um, so it, it, it's really, I mean, I do my due diligence and I do my check-ins, but if, if, if it's a day where there's really nothing on those boards or on the news, then, then I probably don't do too much. If it's a day that there's significant amounts of stuff, 
you know, if I have the time, then then I'll be watching some videos and reading some articles, um, you know, maybe bookmarking them if I don't have the time. Uh, you know, I do, I do, I'll do webinars and and workshops and, you know, in in a normal era era where we're not in a in a pandemic, I'll go to trade shows and product demos. Um, which you know, in as much as they're important, you know, to learning about your craft and, and the new technologies, they're also networking opportunities, um, and it's fun to me. It's not. It's not. It's not work. I mean, again, these are these are toys. It's like, what's the new toy? What's the cool thing? You know, it's you know, n instead of a 4K camera, you have an 8K camera, and and why should I care? You know, and. Um, you know, now you've got these affordable anamorphic lenses. Where did those come from? And how are they different from the, you know, tens of thousands of dollars lenses? And, uh, um, you know, now you've got these RGB LEDs that can do any color under the sun and they can do a, a cop light and they can do a strobe and they can do, um, you know, fire flicker. And I just, I love that because cool, that's a new toy. And I, you know, either rent it or go out and buy it. Um, so, uh, again, there's no, I can't tell you how many hours a day, but but it's certainly, you know, one of my focuses. It's one of the things that, uh, that, that, that um, you know, just like when somebody reads the news, they check, you know, the, the, the national section and the international section and the, the comics and the one ads, for instance. It's like, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, every day I'm like, okay, what's, you know, what do I need to check with? How much time do you spend trying to book your next job? Huh. I could say 24-7 considering I have a website. <laughs> you know, I have I have posts and 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 social media identities on LinkedIn and you know, to me that's like little fish poles with bait that are stuck out into the into the water 24-7. Um you know, I, I network, I plant those seeds. I have people out there that I hope are recommending me and saying good things. You know, maybe that you you would call that passive, but to me that's all, you know, sometimes those get me more work than me picking up a phone or or asking or going to lunch, you know. It's those it's those those ripples you put out into the world. You know, just like you obviously did your research on my website. I didn't have anything to do with that. Um, I mean, I created it, but I, you know, you and I didn't talk about it. Um, in terms of in terms of me personally, you know, it really depends on the days. Um, when 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 California Christmas was blowing up, I was looking at IMDb films in pre production and, and just reaching out to people, you know, because I thought you know now's the moment I can you know reach out and say, hey, I've got a number one film. Um, but you have to balance that, you know, with life. And uh, I could easily be a workaholic, as I've already kind of let you know that I would work through meals and through the night. Um, and you know, I I network and and hustle far more than I shoot. You know, there's this great quote by uh, um, Orson Welles. Um, and it's something to the effect that you know he 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 probably made a mistake becoming a filmmaker um, because it's you know two percent making movies and ninety eight percent begging for the money to make them. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's the essence of part of that quote. Um, and and it really is. I mean, so much of our work is getting work. What I I like to tell people that I am professionally unemployed because what. Most people do only a few times in their life in between jobs. I do constantly. Even when I'm on a job, I'm looking for work, you know? So, so really, if you looked at how I spend the hours in, in my day, I'm professionally unemployed. When you first started out, was it the same percentage of time that you were looking for work? Absolutely not. And, and that's naivete. You know, I really felt build it and they will come. You know, I really felt that, um, I mean, I had never been a freelancer before. I didn't understand the dynamic of working as a freelancer. I didn't understand the importance of networking. I had only ever worked for a company where they meet you once and they hire you and then you just keep showing up and, you know, doing the time card until you quit or get fired. Um, so it really was a, a huge learning curve for me.
And, and there were a lot of illusions, just like when I moved to Los Angeles, I thought, oh, you know, it's a huge city. Somebody's going to hire me. Somebody's going to give me a job. And I was so full of shit, you know, and, and I guess mercifully so, because, because if I really realized how hard it was going to be, would I have done it? I'd, probably, but it, I wouldn't have been as hopeful and optimistic. It would have been more oppressive to live with the reality of what lay ahead of me instead of being blissfully ignorant. Do you think working at these temp jobs prepared you because it's the same thing? Like when you would work at these temp jobs and one of these things would end and okay, accounting doesn't need you anymore. I don't know what you were doing, but, and then you had to go and let the temp company know I'm available this week. Yeah. I mean, in little ways, I think because, because like you could wait for them to call you if they had a job for you, but you could also wake up at 6 a.m. and call and say, I'm available and you were more likely to get something. You know, so there was that incentive, be proactive, you know, and um, um, I'm not a morning person. I mean, left to my own devices, I wake up at 10. So for me to wake up at 6 a.m., that was a superhuman feat. Um, it's not so hard if it's a call time and I'm getting paid, but, you know, just to call, you know, wake up and make a call because maybe I'll get paid to go do a job that I really don't want to do. Oh, my God. Yes. Well, you know. We also don't want to go to the clinic and get shots, but we have to. So it's just, you know, I'm at that age now. You have to get a colonoscopy every five years. It's, I'd rather go to Disneyland, but, you know, the, there are things in life you have to do. And, and when I was out here, calling the temp agency at 6 a.m. was one of them. And it was, you know, again, it was a good habit. It was discipline. It's like, you know, do that thing you don't want to do because you have to. You know, no, you, your boss isn't telling you to and your mom and dad and girlfriend aren't telling you to. And if you don't, nobody's going to be mad at you. You just aren't going to work. 